So now that we're done reviewing, we're ready to start talking about calculus. What is calculus anyway? Uh, one of the students from the Colorado College said, I keep having this recurring dream where my calculus professor is coming after me with an ax. Here's another quote about calculus from Sam Einstein, Albert's great-grandson. Calculus is fun and it's so easy, I don't get what all the fuss is about. So uh, calculus has various different, people have different opinions about calculus. What calculus is not? Okay, here's your first test in calculus. True or false? Unless you actually enjoy wearing a pocket protector, you've got no business taking calculus. What do you think, true or false? Okay, the next question. Studying calculus is hazardous to your health. True or false? And third, calculus is totally irrelevant. True or false? All right, here come the answers. False, false, false. There's this mystique about calculus that it's this ridiculously difficult, incredibly arcane subject that no one in their right mind would sign up for unless it was a required course. Well, don't buy into that. Calculus is difficult, that's true, but it's manageable, it's doable. You made it through algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. Calculus just picks up where they leave off. It's the next step in a logical progression. In fact, I love calculus personally because it uses all of the math you've ever learned all together in one problem. It's not a dead language either, like Latin. It's not just the language of engineers, scientists, and economists. Okay, so it is their language, but you use it all the time. You're not going to talk about it at, your, at the party on Friday night, but the work of those people has had a huge impact on your day-to-day -day life. Your microwave oven, your cell phone, TV, car, medicines you take, workings of the economy, and our national defense. At this very moment, something within your reach, like this video, is or has been impacted by calculus. Calculus is basically just very advanced algebra and geometry. In one sense, it's not even a new subject. It takes the ordinary rules of algebra and geometry and tweaks them so that they can be used on more complicated problems. Of course, there's an other sense in which it is a new and more difficult problem, uh, subject, which is true. So let's talk about calculus. Regular math, if we want to figure out how much force it takes to push a box up a straight line, you don't need calculus just a basic science problem. But if the hill has a slope to it, if it's curved, if it has some kind of a curve, not just a constant slope, if the slope is changing, to figure out the force to push up that hill, you need calculus. So yeah, the real world is not like this. But math has been like this up until calculus. This is more like what the real world is. Another example here is if we have this buried cable and we want to find the length of it, if it goes eight blocks by six blocks and it goes in a straight line, hey, no problem. Without calculus, just do the Pythagorean theorem. However, if you want to find a curved wire, because not all things are buried in a straight line, if you have something above ground, it's going to make an arc like this. To figure out how long that is, that curved length is not so easy. You need calculus. For this example, if you just want to find the area of the roof, no problem simple geometry. They're all rectangles and triangles. But like for the metrodome, if you want to find the area of that dome, you're going to need calculus because of the curves. Anything with a straight line, you don't need calculus, but anything with a curve, you do. Here we're talking about football. For those of you football players, we've got our quarterback here, and he's throwing the ball here, leading the receiver, just in, throws it in a straight line. So you don't need calculus for that. However, if you're trying to find out where to put your, um, um, the, something that's going to orbit the Earth, like we have um, Mars and we want to have some kind of a land rover to land on Mars, it's going to have to curve in its path and we have to match up where the Mars orbit curves with that. So you need calculus to figure that out. In fact, that was the figuring out the orbits of planets was one of the reasons that calculus was invented. Pre-calculus concepts. So without calculus, you can find a y value, right? Just plug in the x value, find the y value. But without, with calculus, 
Well, without calculus, you wouldn't be able to find the limit or the y value of this since it's an open hole. We'll talk more about that open circle kind of idea. But limits are, as x approaches the c value from the left and the right, what is that y value getting close to, even though it may not actually equal that? Here's a, one of the big questions in calculus. We know how to find the slope of a line, but what about the slope of a curve? What would be the slope at this point? A secant line is a line connecting two points on a curve. You can find that equation of that line no problem without calculus. But if you want to find the tangent line, which just hits the curve at one point, you can't find that slope without calculus. We can find the average rate or speed of a car from point A to point B, but if you want to find out instantaneously how fast is the car going right now, you need calculus. Some more examples. If you want to find the curvature of a circle, we could do that without calculus. But with calculus, to find the curvature of a curve, that's what we need calculus for. Height of a curve, no problem, can do that without calculus. Maximum height on a curve between A and B, we need calculus. Tangent plane to a sphere, you can do that without calculus. Tangent plane to a surface that's curved, you need calculus. Direction, along the motional, direction of motion along a, a straight line, you don't need calculus for that. But if we want to find the direction of the motion along a curve, you need calculus. So there are a lot of extents to what we already know how to find that we can use calculus for. Area of a rectangle, we can do that without calculus. Here's the second big idea in calculus. Notice it's called integral calculus. Our calculus is divided into two pieces, differential and integral. We'll get into integral calculus in second semester. To find area under a curve, so this curved line here is not a perfect, it's not a perfect trapezoid, so we have to find, use, use calculus to find that area. Um, work done by a constant force, work done by a force that varies, needs calculus. Center of a rectangle, center of a region, you gotta have calculus. Length of a line segment, no calculus. Length of an arc, you need calculus. Extensions, like we can find the surface area of a cylinder without calculus, but if our solid has a curved edge, to find that surface area, you need calculus. So I'll, I'm not going to go through everything, but anything with a curve on it, basically, or anything with variable pieces, you need calculus to work with. So our two big mathematicians who figured out calculus, who discovered all of the concepts, or a lot of the concepts, the starting concepts of calculus, are Sir Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz. There's a big um, conflict, a big discussion, a big disagreement about who actually invented calculus. Because Sir Isaac Newton, he was an English physicist, mathematician, astronomer, natural philosopher, alchemist, and theologian. He was working on his ideas of calculus in England. At about the same time as Gottfried Leibniz was working on his. He's a German mathematician and philosopher. So one's in Germany, one's in England. They're both trying to figure out these ideas of how to figure out the um, orbit of a planet when it's curved. Anything with curves, what do you do with? How do you figure those things out? And they uh, both published their findings at different times. So the, same, the thought theory is that Isaac Newton figured it out first, but Gottfried Leibniz published it first. So who invented calculus? You can choose whose camp you're in. Are you in Camp Gottfried or Camp Isaac? The two big ideas that we're going to talk about in calculus, the two big motivators, were the tangent line problem and the area problem. The tangent line is trying to find the slope of a tangent line. That, was, that caused a lot of people to not be able to, or people couldn't go on in math because they could not figure out the tangent line problem. So math stopped with algebra and geometry and trigonometry. But they knew that there was something else there. We've got to be able to find the slope of a tangent line, something to, with curves. And that was what Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz figured out. The other thing was, how do you find the area under a curve? That's the integral calculus part. And so those two big ideas are the main things in calculus. And they have so many applications. We'll get to those later. So that is what calculus is. I'm sure you're completely confused. We'll talk more about it later.